love to do it for my little girl because uh, I don't think I've changed much over the years. I, I get into all sorts of controversial scripts and what have you, but uh, deep down I, I do like to please people. Uh, I do uh, appreciate other people playing good snooker against me and uh, I love to actually see the furtherance of snooker no matter what anyone says and uh, it'd be nice to be the people's champion again. The unmistakable Alex Higgins, who became world snooker champion at his first attempt in 1972, and now, ten years later, has achieved his ambition and won the title for the second time. Well, these 1982 Embassy Professional Championships were played at the famous Crucible Theatre in Sheffield, and they were the most watched and the most talked about ever, the shocks and surprises coming in the very first round. Well, the very first match was between 26-year-old Tony Knowles from Bolton and the 24-year-old Londoner, the defending champion, Steve Davis. Now, Davis had won almost everything in sight since winning the title in 1981. But against Tony Knowles, he struggled right from the start. Knowles took the first frame in only 12 minutes, and in the second, Davis needed the last five colours to win the frame and draw level. The shot of a champion. Looking to leave himself an angle on this blue to bring the cue ball back up for the pink. Seven. within three points, but Whoa. he wants both these colours. <laughs> no doubt about that one. center of the bulk cushion.
what's he done this time? Very unlike Steve Davis. Tony Knowles goes two frames ahead. Well, as commentator Ted Lowe said, very unlike Steve Davis, but that was really the story of Davis's play. Tony Knowles took full advantage of it, and at the end of that first day, went to bed after a visit to a nightclub of all places until the early hours, leading eight frames to one in the best of a 19 frames match. Well, the following morning, Davis came to the table hoping his luck would change, but from the very first shot, it looked unlikely. And later, in the same frame, he again lost his concentration. Oh. Well, it obviously wasn't going to be Steve Davis's year. In the 11th frame, with Knowles leading 9-1, Davis was on a 30 break with this difficult black to get to the colours. Well, he desperately needs to get on that yellow off the black, and this is not as easy as it looks. And that was the problem. You see, he had a lot of side on that cue ball. And this gives Tony the opportunity. little kiss on the brown there I think really seals the fate of Steve Davis perfectly on the blue and Fourteen. and a little wave of the hand indicates that the Embassy World Champion has been defeated by Tony Knowles in a superb exhibition of match snooker. So the champion beaten 10 frames to 1 in the first round. The number one seed, the hottest favourite ever, was out. And before long, a string of famous names were to follow him. The second favourite was Terry Griffiths, the 1979 champion. Now, he played Willie Thorne, and like Davis, the Welshman couldn't believe the chances he was missing. At four frames all, Thorne was 52-47 ahead, with just the last six colours left. Bad safety shot from Thorne. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Shouldn't have taken the green anywhere near the brown. Blue and pink still needed. Seven, Cherry Griffiths. Willie 
Thorne, 52. Cherry Griffiths, 54. And what an exciting frame this is to finish the, this initial session of this best of 19 frames first round match. Thorne has been two frames behind at 2 4. What a bonus it would be for him if he could take this frame as well to go in 5 4 up overnight. Terribly unlucky for Thorne. There didn't seem room to send the blue behind the pink and thus over the pocket. Even worse, the cue ball went into the middle pocket to give five away. But Griffiths still right, does right, need the pink as well to clinch this frame. So near the pocket that Griffiths oh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Quiet, please. assumed that the pot was a formality and threw everything into generating the power needed to get the cue ball up and down the table for the pink. And in the circumstances, he's been extremely fortunate that the blue has gone relatively safe. Thorne could risk the double, but terribly dodgy. Just the pink to give Willie Thorne a 5-4 overnight lead. In it goes. Griffiths eventually lost to Thorne, 10 frames to 6. So the people's second favourite was gone as well. Canadian Cliff Thorburn, the 1980 winner, had been made the number two seed. And he played whirlwind Jimmy White. And as early as the first frame, the Londoner showed us he meant business, and how. Here, he leads 28-9.
What do you want? This a crucial shot in Jimmy's break. Not an easy pot blank. But a good position on that red will set him up to really make a big break. And he played it very well. 37. Good position on this red near the left hand side cushion. He gets perfect on this one, and he has done. 64. And he certainly makes it look easy. gifted young man. This is 102, and the first frame with a splendid century clearance by young Jimmy White. Jimmy White proving his point, and he went on to beat Thorburn 10-4. So, the top three seeds were all gone. The next to go was David Taylor, the number seven, who was involved in an extraordinary and controversial incident against Patsy Fagan of Northern Ireland in the 16th frame. Fagan had this shot on the green. Well, Fagan, obviously frustrated, hitting the cue ball back up the table and fouls the green and the blue as well. Now, referee Jim Thorpe asked him if he was conceding. The Irishman said he wasn't. And surprisingly, David Taylor didn't say a word. He just accepted the four points. And after green and blue had been replaced, Taylor lost the frame and eventually lost the match 10-9. So the number seven seed, David Taylor, was out as the arguments raged. And before this extraordinary championship was much older, Fred Davis, the oldest player, seeded 12, was beaten 10-7 by the youngest player, Dean Reynolds of Grimsby. And the number five seed, Dennis Taylor, was beaten 10-7 by Silvino Francisco from South Africa.
Well, it was difficult to realize that all that had happened in the first round. Six seeds knocked out, new names and new faces creeping into the limelight. And now there really wasn't a clear favorite. Well, let's move on to a match from round two. Doug Mountjoy of Wales, seeded number six, and Alex Higgins, seated as low as number 11. Now, in the opening frame, Mountjoy is at the table. There are just three colours left. He leads 67-51. But as you can see, he's snookered. One consolation there, Rex. The pink has gone safe. Yes, you just beat me to it, uh, Ted. I was just going to say the same thing myself. That could be the saving grace for Doug. And what a great shot that is from Higgins. Terrific amount of left-hand side, bringing the cue ball off the bottom cushion, taking the pink over the centre pocket. Eleven. Higgins showing his flair for the seemingly impossible. And by the time they reached the 16th frame, he was still providing the excitement. Here he leads 8-7 in frames, but is 27-10 down. A Higgins special. in it and down to the last three reds. playing the safety shot and sending the red around the table but a bit worried about the red colliding with one of the colours Still a fair bit of work to be done here. This red. 14. Certainly very awkward. Oh. 15. Three 
fantastic reds. Thirteen points My ahead day. as we come to the colours. Joy sees himself dropping again two frames behind. Well, Alex uh, made a mess of that one. After all those brilliant pots, he still got to pot the brown to make the game safe, and there unscrewed the butt of his Thank own cue, put the extension on, Thank you. so that he can use the his own cue instead of using the half but which is provided and he's got to get this brown didn't play a very good shot on the green the queue again then 22 points with 18 points on the table well no problem in hitting this ball swerving it but uh, won't want the cue ball travelling too much. Mountjoy back in the five. match. Mount He's got a free ball. He can take the black, which will count five. Free ball. And clean up. What an extraordinary change of fortune. Well, Alex could have hit that off the side cushion, Mount but he was afraid of going in Alex off, seconds, actually. 49. That's why he preferred to play the swerve shot. Doug still has the problem after the black, getting the blue and back onto the pink. is not uh, easy to screw back onto the pink. Still a very difficult pink. And he also needs the black, so far from home and dry. Extraordinary shot then, a brilliant one for I'm sure Alex Higgins played that double on the pink into the bottom as a case for safety.
he wins the frame and finishes the evening two frames up leading nine frames to seven brilliant play there from both players eventually it was Higgins who went through but only by the odd frame 13-12 now the highest break of the championship came in Alex Higgins's quarterfinal against Willie Thorne it was a model of snooker play a model of snooker technique and it was Willie Thorne who made it one Well, he's got to get well into this to hold on to the other reds. Just about with enough side to take him around the back of the black here. No, he's one. Oh, 41. Well, there is one more loose red. Which he's got on to. Now he's got to get the right angle 48. to get into the bunch of reds. Although I think there is one red in the middle of the pack which will go. And that, uh, he's just having a look at that, but can't get onto the black from particular red. Forty-nine. Well, he's left the angle. Now if you can pop the black, get a decent split on the reds, we might possibly see a big break. Well, he's played for that one loose red in the middle of the pack. 56. with that playing with a lot of side but at the moment he has taken eight blacks so every shot has been a red and a black and Six it's a bit early nine. to uh, talk about it but obviously he's got his mind on a possible maximum Seventy 
32. You appear to have been happier to get one more red because that will make the game safe so then he can relax a little bit more. Now he's got the decision to make and he's just having a word with the crowd because he's got a nice easy red to go through onto the blue or and win the frame or he's got to talk about think about the risk of getting back on the black. And I think that was the sensible thing to do, to make sure that the frame is uh, in the bag first. possibly take all blacks now with the remaining four reds he could equal the championship record of 145 87. which was made by Doug Manjoy well there's a bit short on that one the open red I think it's a little bit difficult to get on the black. Obviously the angle from 95. on the table looked different from our commentary position. his own previous best in the championship of 122. And at no time in the break has he really been in any trouble at all. No, I think that's the thing. It's been a superb break, uh, Jack. And he's played that just about right, left himself a nice angle to stun out off the yellow onto the green. If he can get the lot now, the break will be 143. for the, the blue but he's just got to be a little bit careful with the pink now you probably want to try and kiss this pink towards the middle pocket so that 130 now is the highest break of the championship so far. And what a wonderful start for uh, wow. Willie Thorne in the second session of this 25 frame quarter final. I think the thing that must be pleasing Willie is the way that he's made the break. Absolutely superb. Been on every shot that he played for. Beautiful shot. Played at double strength to come up behind the black. Now, will he be a little bit fortunate on this? 
and a tremendous round of applause. He's right on the back. Must be the shot of the championship. Fantastic shot. Marvellous. 143 clearance. Super. Superb, marvellous. Jack Connum's words exactly right. And that break wasn't battered. And Willie Thorne won two and a half thousand pounds for the best of the championship. Consolation for eventually losing the match 13-10. And that brings us to the semi-final stage of the 1982 Embassy World Professional Snooker Championship. And despite all the shocks and early exits, four great snooker players were left to battle it out for the title and to battle it out for the first prize of 25,000 pounds, record money in the game. Now, the three men who'd come through with Higgins, the Irishman, were Ray Reardon of Wales, Eddie Charlton of Australia, and Jimmy White, the young Londoner, the only unseeded player to make it. And Higgins proved he can be as colourful with words as he is on the snooker table when he summed it all up. Jimmy is uh, the bottom of the list. He's young, and I'm 33, and, and Charlton's whatever he is. And, and uh, well, that, that fellow, Dracula, you know, like he... If he's got a good moon, he can do anything, you know. And it was six times a champion, Ray Reardon, versus twice a losing finalist, Eddie Charlton, who came together for the first semi-final. And the match was over the best of 31 frames. The first man to 16 becomes the winner. And it was neck and neck throughout. The score reached 11 all. It had been trap, escape and counter trap. Both men getting near to, but not quite pulling off a 100 break. We'd seen fine snooker from both players. They both knew that one small mistake would let the opponent in for the kill. And then, three times in a row, Eddie Charlton found that to be true. And here, Ray Reardon leads 14-11, no score yet, in the 26th frame. Queuing very awkwardly there to get that uh, right into the centre, but I don't think Eddie can do much about this. Well, I think in actual fact, Teddy, he's left Eddie a red this time into the right-hand corner pocket, screwing down for the blue. <laughs> Dude, dear. <laughs> It's all happening today, friend Ted. Yes. And the mutterings are getting stronger, I feel.
been the last loose red. Now we'll try and leave an angle on this black to break the pack up after potting the black. 's head just one red coming to the per the only spot he could get out of those reds and lined up for the middle pocket yes John that was very fortunate Disaster this for Charlton. Yes, and I think this is Ray's highest break this session, Ted. Up to now, 44 and still an easy red into the corner pocket. Another nice angle on the blank to go off the back cushion into those six reds. snookers. Perfect to split those three reds here. Here. 
Just the six colors to go. The only 96. difficult one is the pink. Not a good shot, having to cut this green with a lot of left hand side to stay on the brown. Difficult shot this. <laughs> One frame later, Reardon was through. Charlton's fine attempt to beat him had failed yet again. For Reardon, it was the seventh time he'd reached the World Championship final. And he'd never lost in the six previous appearances. Well, the second semi-final was a complete contrast to that one. Jimmy White versus Alex Higgins. Higgins described it as being more at home down in the Florida Keys, a whirlwind against a hurricane. And I can tell you, they didn't disappoint us. We'll start by looking at the seventh frame. Higgins leads by four frames to two and by 45 points to 10, White to play. Very clever shot from Jimmy there. A possible chance to just disturb those two reds this time. 32. Now this pink. If he gets it, everything's there for the taking. 38. means that Higgins needs a snooker. 63. <coughs> 69. And one of those 
balls had gone down every 10 seconds. 69 points in less than three minutes. The whirlwind. Well, by the 15th frame, White had taken a lead of 8-6 and had Higgins in trouble again. 40 points behind, 59 on the table. to get on the red there by the brown. He's gone too far. Alex eight. Three reds then now left. A possible 51 points and the difference 32. Well, this is a very important game for Alex. Dearly needs to win this one because won't want to go into the final session trailing by three frames. this red and a color together with the six colors to win the frame Look at himself. Seven. Alex begins seven. was behind the green but he's left the yellow over the pocket Two. well they certainly had two marvelous chances to win Five. the frame uh, Jimmy White and what an important game this is
Higgins no. must be under tremendous pressure to try and get these colours. And that's a good shot. Sixteen points in it. Eighteen points on the table. And that cue ball going towards that top pocket. Gives little difference in fact, but it does give an advantage to Alex. He can play from the D. square 64 points each and what an exciting match we have now with the frame scores just won the difference Jimmy White leading eight frames to seven Higgins exploiting Jimmy White's mistake on the yellow, only to go two behind again at 10-8. And here in the 19th frame, White is at the table. He's potted one red on his first visit. Well, Alex Higgins has tried very hard to contain this young man and check his terrific potting but he hasn't succeeded this morning Just a little too far past the centre pocket. But that's no problem. 45. And because he can afford to be the way he pots. And he waggles his head there. That one will just slow him down a fraction. snookers so we now have 65. five reds on the table 67 points and he's 66 so now Alex is in trouble and this young man just like shelling peas isn't it 
and White was ahead 11-8, five frames away from a place in the final. Higgins, well, he had other ideas, and here is only one down, 12-11, and nine points ahead in the 24th frame. on another red but still can get through should have got from that and I think there is a red that will go in the center certainly a tough one but if it will go Jimmy picks these off a tremendous shot again Next to the pink will free the pink 14. and also the two reds which are touching each other.
one. little bit short he's got to use the rest now six inches harder he could have played it with a hand bridge and although he's got the pot he's lost a measure of position needs to play another good shot here to keep going instead of an easy one Higgins refusing the pot in favour of the near certainty of leaving a sneaker. White swerving out. And Higgins' choice of shot certainly appears to have been the right one. Jimmy White with that uh, swerve shot got the yellow in a little bit more awkward position. So it's not quite that easy for Alex. <laughs> well, he played nice, delicate little cannon onto the yellow, but again, Five. very, very difficult. All he can do is safety. White was a bit careless with that. Should have uh, perhaps concentrated a little more on getting the yellow from behind in order to Put more distance between cue ball and yellow. And Higgins very disappointed there at missing the initial shot for what could have been a clearance.
fabulous shot. Really went for it. And that's a terrible shot. Could have been overreaching slightly, but uh, for whatever reason, that was an opportunity missed. Higgins retires anxiously to see whether White can see the brown. He couldn't. fellow Alex is because he was a mile away from where the pocket he played it in and he really does appear to be under pressure needs a, all the balls to win and levels at 12 frames all. Higgins enjoying it, but by frame 30, just two to go, White leads 15-14. No score, Higgins to play. Well, a colossal screw shot to get back to safety. under pressure that a lot of tension out there now and that's Eight. given Jimmy an excellent chance to get a break Nine. going here Mr. Certain Black. And has been rather fortunate there. He's gone into the pack of reds but left it relatively safe.
he's certainly looking everywhere, but I think he's got a bit of play safe here. Jack, this could be the winning break. Thirteen. And that really is a delightful shot to get around the angles, getting on the bright side of all the reds. So Alex breathes again, 59 points in front now, and still enough points on the table for Alex if he can just take his opportunity. I think he's got to have a go at the blue or the green. Um, there's plenty of points on the table for Alex. shot has brought the only red that was relatively safe over the centre pocket. And at the moment Alex just isn't getting the run. He's He had it in the early stages but it's left him at the moment. Well, he can pot this blackjack, and I think he's got to go for it. Into this right-hand corner pocket. This is the big shot of the frame. And that's a tremendous shot under pressure. A lot of courage Alex has got. Now another difficult red into the centre pocket. not able to afford any mistakes. If he's going to go for a colour to play for the Reds, he must get it, or else it could be the end of the match. Well, it's not an easy position, this. He might elect to play as if looks as if he's going for the blue into the top right-hand corner. And then another tremendous shot. in 
into the corner pocket, right hand bottom pocket. Oh, and that's a beautiful shot. for him, Jack. I think if he clears this, this would be the break of the tournament. And here we have the colours on this box. Yes, Jack. All easy shots, these, normally. But every one a pressure shot in this situation. behind just has to hold it together for five more shots tremendous break this Beautifully on the pink. And he needs the pink and the black. And he's on the black. And what a fabulous break if he knocks this black in. Oh, marvellous! And Higgins telling us all, I want just one more. And there was only one more to play for a place in the world final against Ray Real. We just watched one of the most exciting frames of snooker ever. They had to try and follow that. Jimmy White followed it with the first six points, and here's the Higgins reply. I tend to think, Jack, this has become a test of courage. shorter pace there, wanted to come more into the centre of the table. Can take the back red of those two though, Jack, to come round for the black into the same pocket. Try 
tried to get round the back of the black, just caught it. to leave the red into the centre pocket. Two points to six, Alex leads in this final frame. Fifteen frames each. Being rather unfortunate though when splitting the reds, he has a red into the centre pocket, but it's not easy this red. could put the pink into the centre and hold the white there for this red just below the, the last of those three reds together. a 59 break and still enough points on the table now can this young man rise to the occasion will probably play this loose red at the near the bottom cush wanting to leave the other reds grouped up as Jimmy virtually needs all the reds. Shouldn't think Alex would want to open any of the reds up here. And there 
we see the difference, the sort of balls Jimmy's been potting throughout this match, and the difference that pressure makes when you have to get them. <coughs> Just one red now wanted to leave. Jimmy needing snookers. And Alex having a hard look at the scoreboard. And marvellous red. And that will certainly make him feel better. And Jimmy White, I feel, must be feeling that this is the end of the road. Yes, Jack, but what a tremendous performance by Alex these last two frames. 16. Looking virtually out of the tournament. I don't think you'll be too worried about that now. Sixty-three behind and fifty-one on the table. just a question of Alex winding up the frame and indeed the match and what a victory and what tremendous courage both players have shown and they've really given us some enjoyment. Yes, Jack, I think one of the most exciting matches I've ever seen in my life, this. Yes. And Jimmy looking rather sad, but uh, at least he has the consolation of being just a young lad of 20, and he'll come again. So Jimmy White concedes and what a splendid finish and a truly, truly superb semi-final. So the people's player now has a chance to really be the people's champion. And all the lucky charms had worked for this unpredictable and brilliant snooker player. We'd reached the most remarkable climax to the most remarkable world championship ever. On the first two days, the favourites, the seeds, had gone tumbling. But now we had a final ahead of us that I don't think even a scriptwriter would have dared to invent. Alex Higgins, the champion at his first attempt in 1972, beaten in two other finals by Cliff Thorburn in 1980, and before in 1976 by the man he now faced, Ray Reardon, the Welshman, who'd never lost a final in six previous appearances. It was a contrast in player, a contrast in person. The fans were split right down the middle. Now, they had to win 18 frames to take that title champion of the world, and Reardon won two out of the first three. 
Here in the fourth, Higgins has potted the first red in a yellow, Reardon yet to reply. side with screw on that cue ball. won't go on its spot, so it's highest available, which is the brown. And just nudges that red out of the way for the black. Put those reds perfect there. <coughs> Had to run into the other red there, but uh, still come very nicely on the red. Oh, that's an excellent shot, and that's 54 break now, that's Alex's first 50 of the match. And what a marvellous red that was, the one that he wanted, 61. kept himself in position. this next colour, which is the important one, Rin will need snookers.
general who will know exactly what to do in this situation. 68. Try and relax. And the perfect angle on the black here gives him complete command of the cue ball too. Just a little nudge there and he's off again. 76. 77. This time can take the red off the side cushion with this red. And absolutely spot on. And that is true craftsmanship, just nudging that red. so far in the tournament of course is by Willie Thorne which is 143 so at least he can get close to it to 10-7 in Higgins' favour. They started again on Sunday morning. Higgins immediately gave four points away and here trails 20 points to nil. One. Well, he's come through the gap there and left himself perfect on the black. So this is a good chance for Higgins. Twenty-two. 
21. Higgins unlucky actually to go in off the black, but the trouble started the previous shot when he left himself just short of his intended position on the black, had to pop the black at a much thinner angle than he would have liked. have to sit down for a minute or two here because this is a good opening for Reardon. Cannon that uh, red and got onto the red to hold himself on the black there. And uh, Redden should win the play from this position. Should be no doubt at all, and I'm sure that if he doesn't, he'll be very disappointed. Except for the one red is behind 16. the pink and the one on the side cushion all the others nicely open so enough to put himself in a winning position 17 planning to separate the pink from one of the two troublesome reds and leaving himself still on an easy red for the middle. 25. Just the pink and one more red needed to leave Higgins needing a snooker. Fifty 
two. Well, that wasn't a good shot from Reardon. Didn't, didn't get on this shot as he should have done. But uh, negotiated without any problem. Should have left himself a little bit easier on that, but the game is safe, so he won't be very worried. Reardon will certainly want to complete a clearance here to keep his own momentum going and keep Higgins cold. No century possible, 95 is the most that he can get, but I'm sure he'll be most happy with the start that he's made. 73. Just what the doctor ordered from Reardon's point of view. And frame after frame they remain locked together. But Reardon was always behind throughout the day. By nine o'clock that night, it was 15-14 to Higgins. To win, remember, you need 18. And the nerves were very evident here. Reardon leading 22 points to 10. centre pocket to start with. Alex Higgins 14, Ray Reardon 22. Yes, Alex looking to see if the pink will go into the centre pocket. I would be surprised if he plays for the pink off his first red, but uh, just looking for colours that he can get off the following red, so I would say it's a red and one of the lower colours and then up the table. an amazing choice of shot had to be absolute perfect weight and he's got on it perfect
Still in perfect 29. position, just looking there to see what position he wants on the red near the top cushion after taking this red and pink. So there, Alex, three shots 30. in front. Thirty-six. This time I would think we'll play for the black. And Rexy jumped up completely on that one, did he? Go? Well, yes, Ted, that was pressure because Alex knew that the red was so important, the red and the black would have left red and needing snookers. And the pressure got at him there. Leading them by 28 points. Left this one for Ray Redden. One. And Ray in a little bit of trouble here. The last red right on the top cushion. Just gathered up the six points. Seven. terrible mess of that because he had a choice of two shots played the one that he played because he thought that he'd get it very much safer ahead then, with only 27 points on the table. Thank you. 
and snooker, will he take advantage of one or two small colours before he goes for that snooker? Ren will be trying to get into the best possible position to get a good, really good snooker. Two. And I would say that he'll take the green and possibly try and get the snooker on the brown. Maybe looking to get a snooker off the side cushion and get one behind the black or even a really good one behind the blue but certainly we'll want to make it a really good one five the difference now 24 points with 22 points on the table is absolutely brilliant. Well, Alex wants to play off this off the two cushions. Just look and see if he's got the right angle. seemed to close on him. He potted only two reds and a green in two frames, leaving Higgins at 17-15, playing with flair and courage, needing just one more. Ray Reardon needed expertise and luck. Final. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 
cue ball keeps popping into the pocket. That's a magnificent shot, right on the black. Yes, and that was a real pressure shot because had he missed that, all the reds were spread open and he would have left me with a good chance. Marvellous shot. And I think he's made a bit of a mess of that one. Eight. left himself in a very difficult position to use the rest. Well, he's got the shot, but Nine. the result is that uh, he's out of position on the black, and this is a very dangerous shot again. starting to flow now for Alex Higgins. Well, Alex knows that the championship is within his grasp from this position. Providing that he's very careful. No reason why he shouldn't win the title here. And Redden will be suffering in his seat. This is the fourth time that Alex Higgins has been in this final. Won it in 1972. Lost it to Ray Redden in 1976. 39. And lost it to the Canadian champion Cliff Thorburn in 1980. Frustrated, but helpless. I think that's just touched that red in the right way to leave it into the corner pocket if he wishes to play that. Uh, he throws in the centre and providing the strength is right for the black. And it is. He's still back in perfect position.
Salam. three-year-old Irishman making hay while the sun shines going out in a complete blaze of glory here 84 85 controversial temperamental but a terrific talent for the game of snooker century of the championship. And what a time to make it, Ted. Fantastic. to go now for a break of a hundred and thirty five. Ray Reardon has sat in his chair for the whole of this final frame. Fantastic. World Snooker Champion for 1982 is Alex Perkin Higgins. And admirers all the way round, the fans coming forward, congratulations from every side for this extraordinary young Irishman who has done so much for the world of snooker since he came on the scene just 10 years ago. Presented with the Embassy World Championship trophy, the emotion finally overcomes him. All he wants is to share the greatest moment of his unique life with his baby daughter Lauren and his wife Lynn. And even a record check for £25,000 doesn't get a second glance. Ladies and gentlemen, the new world champion.
Junior Alex Higgins. Alex Higgins and family, champions of the world. The end of 17 days at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. 17 days which have closed with these rare moments in sport, but which throughout have given us more than just a few moments of entertainment.